Hey everyone, Sky here to discuss Tenet, starring John David Washington, Robert Pattinson, Elizabeth Debicki, Michael Caine, and Kenneth Branagh, and directed by Christopher Nolan. Now before I get into this review, I have to tell you this now. I saw the movie twice, and two, that's one of the things that's out of two. Um, but the first time I saw the movie, I got like at least 75% of it. And 90% was, uh, was more explained on second viewing. But if you are wanting to see this movie so badly that you are afraid to go to movie theaters and don't want to be spoiled at this point, do yourself a favor. Turn off this video because of the fact that this is going to be a spoiler-filled ride. I mean, really, a spoiler ride. So, let's get into the movie. The movie opens with a prologue. If anyone saw Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker in IMAX, you saw this scene where some robbers shoot up a playhouse full of dead pe full of people, excuse me, not dead people, but alive people, but they put them in gas. And John David Washington's character, only known in the movie and as in the credits as the protagonist, rescues a man whom I'm led to believe is his boss. And next scene, you know, the protagonist is almost dead on the train tracks, and as a prologue, it was intense and very thrilling. The protagonist wakes up in an afterlife on a ship, and his boss talks with the protagonist about preventing World War III from ever happening, and his word is Tenet, which is the title of the movie, by the way. And he's given an assignment to stop it, and he learns a trick of how he can catch a bullet with the glove in every term of events going backwards, which is brilliant, uh, which is a brilliant idea for Christopher Nolan to make into a movie to take on since Dreams and Inception, and I really like do like the idea of the move as a movie, and I had to pay close attention. The first time, like I said, I on my first viewing, I got seventy five percent of what happened in the, my first viewing. And I'll tell you how much I got 90% on second viewing when I get to the rating. But again, it's a brilliant idea for a Christopher Nolan movie. The protagonist meets Neil, played by Robert Pattinson, from Twilight. Or, I reviewed him before in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, so I'll say that much. And jumps on a building to find the arms dealer named Priya. And talks about the future and protagonists. And then he jumps down, which is a great scene. And next scene, we meet Sir Michael Crosby, played by Michael Caine, for a brief lunch and talks about an, uh, the assignment of finding who's out, who's starting World War III by the name of Andre Sa Satter, played by Kenneth Branagh, who's estranged from his wife, Kath, played by Elizabeth Debicki, who Christopher Nolan hired but didn't want to hire her because she was too good in the movie. And she has an arc of seeing her son versus seeing a woman diving off Andre's boat and wants to kill Andre And as he abuses her. And they talk in the restaurant and the protagonist finds Andre's bodyguards. And I really love that fight as in the kitchen with the sound effects pumped my heart to the point I felt the fight. The protagonist meets Kat and she tells him that some painting that's hiding in the airport and make a plan with me here played by Hamish Patel to crash the plane at the airport on the ground and that was a spectacular shot in the entire movie in my opinion meanwhile the protagonist and Neil cover up the painting and go to five different rooms and find bullet holes on a glass and fights a security guard backwards while Neil chases the other guy and lets him go for reasons we'll find out later in the film. And that's what I love about Christopher Nolan's movies, because he likes to keep the mystery as tight as possible until the very end of the movie. The protagonist asks Kat to introduce Andre to him as a friend that, that they met in a party. And the protagonist comes to the dinner party, and Andre feels threatened by him, and the protagonist joins them the next day of a boat ride as Kat tries to kill Andre by pushing him at the water, but the protagonist wants Andre alive, and Andre thanks the protagonist for saving his life by staying for one night insistingly. 
And I'm really enjoying these characters and the tension here in, is beyond magnificent. Andre takes Cat to his weapons dealings with so many guns and Cat pulls on one out and doesn't shoot him and beats and he beats up and spits on her while the protagonist and Neil drive a car in between two trucks in front, sideways and back while the protagonist goes on the fire truck to get on top to grab a weapon of some kind with a chase that goes backwards sort of to find Cat with a gun on her head by Andre to give him the weapon and Andre jumps out of the car to save Cat but doesn't succeed and Neil has a shootout and the protagonist taken to the factory Andre Andre to Cat as it is his weapons dealing and he tells Andre he hid it in the glove box in a BMW and it was an ambush with Neil's guys and we meet Ives, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, who's the one in charge, and the protagonist goes facing backwards, chasing only before he was in a black car, whereas now he's in a silver car, and goes backwards in time to stop himself from giving Andre the weapon, and the protagonist dies briefly, not completely, but briefly, and that's pretty well done, and the driver who crashed was the protagonist, going backwards and the chase was pretty damn cool and going backwards was brilliant but at the same time it was pretty confusing and this movie is confusing you're not going to get it first viewing you have to see it multiple times to understand it the protagonist wakes up and finds neil and cat in a truck as the protagonist realizes what happens forward it happens backwards they arrive at the airport where they crash the plane and goes forward to the crash and the protagonist goes forward by fighting himself. Yes, as it turns out, he was fighting himself in the uniform earlier in the film. And Neil doesn't tell the protagonist if it, it was him half for half the movie until now. And that was a great choice to reveal the mystery now than doing it earlier in the movie. The protagonist visits Priya and have a talk of how she almost had Cat killed two days from now when the movie takes place and to tell him to do his part as he's a protagonist and tells them Kat and her son will be safe and this scene is shot beautifully and this is a great looking movie that you have to pay close attention to the protagonist and Neil and Kat go on a ship to a desert where they fight in order to stop World War 3 while Kat goes back on Andre's yacht to kill him with a gun and she does as Andre's death has has got to be painful in my opinion and she jumps in the water and she's the one who saw herself in the water and the fight begins and they have 10 minutes until kaboom and the protagonist and Ives goes in a cave and Ives gets shot dead while Andre has trapped the protagonist and Neil drives around to save both the protagonist and Ives and at first he tries to warn them by honking the horn on the army car and Andre is dead at this point and the protagonist and Ives yes eventually comes back who comes back to life which he goes backwards from being shot goes with the protagonist to stop the kaboom from ever happening but doesn't but they're not successful and Neil pulls them out and as they're out safely Ives pulls out a gun and he with the protagonist and Neil split a weapon in three ways but Neil decides to give the protagonist the, his part of the weapon so nobody can ever find it and Neil tells the protagonist that we will live in a twilight world and he'll see him in the beginning of uh, as he said to John David Washington's character and as a climax, it was very thrilling and action-packed with sounds like the real world. Priya lies about Kat and her son's safety, and the protagonist kills her, and I loved the final minutes of the movie. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.0 out of 10. I'll give this movie not quite as good as Inception, but it's a brilliant idea to, of a plot to go sometimes forward and sometimes backwards. And it made me... And it made me in the, 
and it made me um and it made me feel pumped and the fight and chase sequences are very pumping as far as the sound effects goes and this is very action-packed and a thrilling movie and i understood at least 90 percent of the movie on second viewing like i said earlier christopher nolan is a masterful director with a twist and a great vision so i'd like to thank you guys for joining me and until christopher nolan decides to make another movie see you later